Um, actually, I'm not worried at all, Steve. The, um, when, uh, when talking with many of my peers in, in the industry, uh, they, um, they do hear, of course, all the political discussions, uh, but it is uh, imperative that we drive the energy transition forward. Uh, in particular, if you, if you look at uh, who will need to use electricity going forward. Uh, today, 20% of the energy mix is only electricity. In 2022, according to the IEA, the International Energy Agency, mm -hmm. and if we want to drive in a more sustainable way forward, in 2050, we're talking 50%. So there needs to be more electrification and is driven forward in many sectors. I have nothing but enormous respect for Dr. Fatih Birol, the head of that institution you just mentioned, the IEA. I've had the pleasure and honor of knowing him for long over a decade as well. The problem is Dr. Birol is in a cat fight, as you well know, with the hydrocarbon industries as well, and with a lot of people who think it's going to be a lot slower energy transition as well. I hear what he's saying. I, I hope in many ways for the planet he's right, but the fact remains is that his assumptions are not completely widespread uh, with, with a lot of detractors out there as well is the impetus and I'll ask you from a different point of view when I see stories about Volkswagen having to potentially close manufacturing and cut jobs here in Europe because if amongst other things EV adoption is just underwhelming again there are concerns that we're not on track the, uh, there is no question that we're, that we're on track. I think we're not on track. That's very clear. Uh, but uh, that won't stop the transition. It won't stop the trend in, in, the, in, that, uh, in that way. And, um, you know, if you, uh, if you uh, it's, it's clear that climate change is there. And 80% um, of the CO2 emissions in the world are related to energy. Um, but uh, a lot of people only talk about the generation side of the energy, but there is also the demand side. And the demand side uh, that um, generates CO2, transportation is not the top sector. There are other sectors that generate much more CO2, buildings, the industrial world, and then uh, transportation just comes with a, with a couple of percentages. So there's a lot of work to be done. We often yeah. talk about a killer app when it comes to technology. And if uh, EV, if transportation is not the killer app for energy transition, could it be AI? Because we know there are huge consumption needs for AI. Could that be the trigger that uh, propels energy transition? Listen, the, um, uh, the, if there would be a killer app and if it would be so simple, we would have done it already. Uh, I think that's uh, statement number one. Uh, well, the good news is that 70% of the CO2 that is generated today can be abated with existing technology. And, uh, you know, AI has been around for 40 years. Now, uh, in the last two years, of course, with the large language models, uh, there has been a lot of talks about it. And, uh, of, of course, when you, when you look at... Um, the uh, NVIDIA and uh, the likes that, um, you know, build very modern GPUs, graphic processing units that will drive um, AI. There is also going to be much more power consumption, a power consumption in respect to electricity. And it needs to be renewable electricity and it needs to be managed in a sustainable way. And that's where Schneider comes in. Let's get into that a bit more because we feel as though the focus around AI is very much around uh, a couple of names, almost a single name at times around NVIDIA. But there is a, a bigger universe that is going to have to power AI and that's going to be part of this story. So as you, we look at some of the ordering, some of the capital flows into AI, how much is going into the energy side? So um, if, you, uh, if, if you look at the data center that's built out, and you know, um, people may not know, but Schneider is actually the largest uh, provider of infrastructure, electrical infrastructure that goes into data centers. And, and roughly 40% of a data center built out will go into the infrastructure. So from, uh, from that perspective, it's, uh, uh, it's big and a lot of money flows in and a lot of projects are being planned. It's kind of a, a, a little bit of a race at the moment because uh, everybody wants to have the latest model uh, to, um, for people to use AI, be it um, uh, JetGPT, Gemini, just to, just to name a few. And there are many of them. And the, the more modern this, these models are, uh, the, the better the answers are you getting from AI. Do you want to talk to us briefly about liquid cooling? Because I know there's a lot of new technology around AI. It's not the, the same measures that we use to, to pumped cool. pumped up about liquid cooling. Well, but, and it's uh, a lot of fuss around it. <laughs> So we're not just putting air conditioning units on apparently to okay. cool devices. Liquid cooling is the new thing. So liquid cooling has been also around for a long time. If you look at supercomputers, uh, they use liquid cooling because... Uh, but none what, of us have supercomputers, so none uh, of us uh, know that, about that, it. That's right. But the, the data centers, to, uh, in particular, to learn or train the AI models, uh, they have um, 
a very large power density because of the processors that are in there. And if you, um, um, if you bring energy from the grid to the chip, as we say, you, uh, in the chip what you do is you convert the energy into movement of electrons uh, and also generate heat. Now the heat needs to come out because the silicon can only handle temperatures up to 85 uh, to 100 degrees and the best way of getting the temperature out is uh, with precision cooling so you go right to the chip uh, to take it out and uh, so with that the um, uh, water cooling and it's not uh, pure water uh, but the water that is directed to the chip uh, we can, can take the heat out in the best way. Now when we talk high density data centers and they're just being built as we speak, uh, liquid cooling will play um, an important role in it.